Hey guys, so I thought I'd show you my uh, bed upgrade support. <clears throat> this thing is uh, super, super weak. Uh, it, it looks like it's the same for the uh, E8, E12, and E10, or no, A8, E10, E12. So this is actually an E10, but the uh, the problem with these things is they warp a lot more easily. So uh, anytime you're, you're, you're trying to knock off a piece or part, um, yeah, I can't stand it every time I mean, I haven't printed with this thing a lot, but the few times I've printed with this thing, sometimes when I have to knock off a, like a stiff piece of uh, material, it actually throws the whole bed of, out of alignment. I have to recalibrate everything. So, <coughs> I got this uh, plate cut for me on the industrial metal supply in Irvine. So, I was going to actually replace that or add on top of it this more robust piece of aluminum here. Um, you know, a lot thicker and uh, less likely to warp. But also, because I'm actually going to be doing the uh, this capacitive, you know, sensor, you know, I'm, actually, I'm probably going to get rid of all this altogether. All the, uh, uh, these adjustabilities, because this, man, these, they, they never stay in alignment. So, I'm going to get some of these aluminum. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that right now or later, but I'm going to actually have this as a fixed bed, you know. It's going to be like that. Well, the, the other hot bed will be on top of this laying like that. So it's going to be one solid piece of metal, not adjustable, but then I'll have all the, the software adjustment done in the code. So, so it's one solid bed. And actually one of the things I like about the A-Net is that, you know, compared to the uh, Creality or the Tito Tornado, is it has these dual rails here. So I feel like that's way more sturdy. It's like they, they the design was better, I thought, but at the last second, they use this, this really bad, weak metal. I mean, you can just see how warped it is in that corner, you know? So it throws alignment. It makes it weird, you know? So, got to deal with that situation. But, yeah. So, yeah, anytime you pry something off, it's going to want to bend one of these. So, all right. So, I'm going to take this off and use this as a template to put on top of that and drill holes. Awesome. Right, maybe you guys can see this. this is my combination square. I'm just putting it in a way you can see it better. Look how off this thing is. I mean, you can just see the gaps right there, you know? It's so warped. Right there, you know? Like right in that area right there. Alright. So. Alright, guys. Like always, my workbench is a mess here. Okay. I'm going to use that as a template. I'm actually probably going to bend this back a little bit so it fits better. But I can't tell if both sides are warped. Well, oh, I don't mind the screws are holding it down. So I'm going to use my clamp. I'm going to get some clamps and then clamp it in place and then mark where I need to drill the holes. And we'll go from there. Cool. Alright guys, so I got the kind of already marked out already. So I'm going to use my little Nail I sharpen the end off and I'm going to tap it to get the drill started so it doesn't spin around everywhere. Alright, uh, alright, cool. Alright, so I use my drill press right there, my uh, table saw. You know my see right there is uh, up in Big Bear. Alright, so those are holes drilled. So I made these small because I'm going to tap those to hold the belt right here. So, I think at this point I'm not going to even go back to the adjustable one. I don't. I'm still debating on that because I might just go fix right now and just get it over with, you know, get the uh, auto leveling thing working, you know, this thing. So, uh, alright, so I'm going to have to cut this out right here too as well. So this was I had on this side. So, um, I might countersink those, make them a little smoother, but I'm gonna, see this right here? I have to cut a little notch out right here because it's going to hit this as it comes up forward. Alright, so I'm going to do a quick uh, little test cut here, or, or a test pattern, and see where I need to go with that. Alright guys, have the uh, bed there, the uh, support plate. I kept the uh, the original one on there underneath it, to give it a little, a little bit extra support. I'm trying to keep weight down a little bit, so I'm trying to get screws as short as possible. And also, you know, when, when, I, when I was... Uh, 
taking this printer out here, it, I ripped off my, uh, I didn't realize it, but I ripped off my, uh, my heater plug here, so I had to solder back on there, fix a couple traces. So I'm also, I'm going to put some epoxy here, because this thing was super weak. So I glued it in a spot, then I'm just going to put a huge thing of epoxy right here to keep it as secure as possible. Um, yeah, because that's sort of a weak design, so you think they would have had it directly screwed or something into the board, but, you know, this is a cheap printer, so. Um, okay, cool, I'm going to get the epoxy right here. Hey guys, glue is dry on the header there. So now, I'm going to mount these things. Originally I thought I was going to use these, but, I mean, that brings up a little bit too high, and I'd lose height on the, uh, on the Z-axis, I'd lose uh, a few millimeters. Plus, I'm trying to reduce the amount of weight, because I'm already adding so much weight to this. <clears throat> yeah, because more weight will create jerking. Um, Alright, we get those headers on, then I'm going to put this top of the header, and just screw back in with the original screws. Then I actually have some uh, little washers and little microscopic uh, lock lock nuts. All right, hey guys, we are finished. Super solid. Take a look. So if I wouldn't have already had a printer with uh, auto leveling, I'd never would have known the difference. So. Yeah, I just I, I was frustrated within a couple hours of dealing with the auto level thing because, like I said, every time I uh, would take a part off, like a bigger part, if it was stuck on there, it would it would throw the whole bed out of line. But I'd have to go through just everything it was a headache. So, I mean, I would like to make this thing work like the printer bot, you know, the auto bed leveling. So, um, yeah, that was pretty revolutionary for the time, man, for these printers. I don't know if it's. I mean, a lot of the newer, cheaper printers come out don't have the out of level and I think it was like six hundred dollars brand new so okay guys cool so that's the end of this video um, I'm actually gonna be working on the uh, coming up I'm gonna be doing the uh, auto leveler the capacitive auto leveler which is gonna go right there in the next video and um, I gotta flash the uh, firmware and put a bootloader on my uh, control board here at the box so all right cool